Support Roller March Unfiltered, be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. Roland Martin Unfiltered dot com. Um, there's this one video that uh, Lisa, that, that uh, Leslie Jones had posted, uh, and um, folks might see this video, see this white guy, hear his twang, and think, "Oh my God, there goes a Donald Trump supporter." No, and you know what? What he had to say, I think he's speaking for a hell of a whole lot of Americans. Y'all watch this. Hope you're fucking happy and sad, you fucking little piss pants pieces of shit. Oh, we're going to storm the Capitol. Let's storm the Capitol. We're patriots. You're a fucking coward. Patriots. Jesus Christ. Fucking idiots that I played high school football with wearing a goddamn American flag bandana talking about we got to get up there and storm. We got to take our country back. From what? From fucking what? What are you so goddamn upset about? What has anyone ever done to you? You fucking entitled piece of shit. Don't you ever fucking call me one again. Don't you ever say, Corey, you fucking snowflake. You're a liberal. That means that y'all look, look, look. What? Want some people to not be sick every now and then? Is this the thing that you can't fucking stand? So you've got to get in your goddamn fucking piece of shit Ford F-150 you got from your dad, drive it to D.C. and pitch a fucking fit? Is that what it is? Is it health care? Is, is it still with the fucking guns? Is that what? What is it? You said Obama was taking them. Eight fucking years ago you said that. Nothing. What is it that this country hasn't fucking given you? You literally got escorted out of the Capitol building aside from the ones that they had to fucking shoot. Is that what it takes? Is you just want to be a fucking martyr? God, you're so fucking pathetic.
Do you not ever just sit there and think, my kids are going to see this. My grandkids are going to see this. They're going to put it in the textbook, and you're going to look like the dumbest motherfucker in the world. Nobody will give a shit about Watergate. Nobody. That is fucking... Dude, I'm out of breath from how stupid y'all are. What is it that this country doesn't give you that you think you have to do some bullshit like this? But when you see a fucking black person actually get shot... No gun in their hands. Nothing. Oh, they should just comply. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. What is your goddamn problem? Quit giving... Just quit embarrassing me, man. I want my fucking country back. How about that? God damn it. Fuck y'all, you fucking cowards. All right, folks. Back to our my unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin unfiltered to support it, please do because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support Roland Martin Unfiltered. Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roland Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Now, I, I do want to play this video here uh, of a true hero while Donald Trump is trying to sit here uh, in screw of America by giving the Medal of Freedom to Bill Belichick later this week. Um, Eugene Goodman should get it. Now, I want people to watch this video. It's a 38 second video. Eugene Goodman, this brother, Capitol Hill police officer. <clears throat> but I want y'all to see what he did. Eugene Goodman literally saved the lives of United States senators. Folks, watch the video, and I'm going to replay it, and I'm going to de definitely get Malcolm's thoughts on this. Folks, watch this here. I want y'all to see. I'm gonna, this is only another yeah. uh, 21 seconds. Y'all, Eugene Goodman is going to, he's going to lean back and look to his left. I want y'all to understand mm -hmm. that was the entrance to the U.S. Senate floor. You're going to see him uh, pull out his stick. You know, he, he's going to extend it. He's then going to turn his body this way. Then he's going to push the guy. Then you heard him on the radio. He was calling for backup. He pushes the guy, and then he starts walking the other way. You're going to see the lead white guy look to the right, not knowing what's down the hallway, and is going to keep following Eugene. Eugene Goodman mm -hmm. saved U.S. senators from either being kidnapped, harmed, or murdered by these white domestic terrorists. And so I just want you all to see it again that brother is a real hero. Watch this. Yeah. <laughs> 
Malcolm, I've got some idiots on YouTube, and, and it really pisses me off when people don't understand what in the hell is going on. I got Elijah, yeah. Elijah James, a black man with a gun running from white people. How heroic. And then somebody else says, uh, uh, Juanda Weathers, he should have shot his ass. No, if y'all pay any attention, there were literally more people than bullets he had. Right, and what his right. whole job was to ensure that he doesn't get hurt, they don't attack the senators, so he leads them away from the Senate and walks them right into the hands of three other... <laughs>
at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support Roller Mark Unfiltered. Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Now, I, I do want to play this video here uh, of a true hero while Donald Trump is trying to sit here uh, in the screw of America by giving the Medal of Freedom to Bill Belichick later this week. Um, Eugene Goodman should get it. And I want people to watch this video. It's a 38 second video. Eugene Goodman, this brother, Capitol Hill police officer. <clears throat> but I want y'all to see what he did. Eugene Goodman literally saved the lives of United States senators. Folks, watch the video, and I'm going to replay it, and I'm going to de definitely get Malcolm's thoughts on this. Folks, watch this here. I want y'all to see. I'm got, this is only another yeah. uh, 21 seconds. Y'all, Eugene Goodman is going to, he's going to lean back and look to his left. I want y'all to understand mm -hmm. that was the entrance to the U.S. Senate floor. You're going to see him uh, pull out his stick. You know, he, he's going to extend it. He's then going to turn his body this way. Then he's going to push the guy. Then you heard him on the radio. He was calling for backup. He pushes the guy, and then he starts walking the other way. You're going to see the lead white guy look to the right, not knowing what's down the hallway, and is going to keep following Eugene. Eugene Goodman mm -hmm. saved U.S. senators from either being kidnapped, harmed, or murdered by these white domestic terrorists. And so I just want you all to see it again that brother is a real hero. Watch this. Malcolm, I've got some idiots on YouTube, and, and it really pisses me off when people don't understand what in the hell is going on. I got Elijah, yeah. Elijah James, a black man with a gun running from white people. How heroic. And then somebody else says, uh, uh, Juanda Weathers, he should have shot his ass. No. If y'all pay any attention, there were literally more people than bullets he had. Right, and what his right. whole job was to ensure that he doesn't get hurt. They don't attack the senators, so he leads them away from the Senate and walks them right into the hands of three other cops. Now, and you see at the end there how Eugene, mm -hmm. uh, uh, how, you, uh, how Eugene does, watch right here, y'all. Watch the other cops when Eugene's like, I got help, backing up, I'm good. Right. What y'all want to do now? Yeah. That's <laughs> smart <laughs> policing, Ma Malcolm. Go right ahead. Yeah, when I first saw that video, I was confused by it, right? I said, there's, some, there's something going on here because it doesn't look it, it procedurally correct. And uh, if you watch the video carefully, you'll see he actually puts his body in the doorway of the Senate. And that's when he actually 
takes out his ass baton, pushes back, and then leads them up that other set of steps, calls that he's going to the second floor, and meets them with another, you know, 10 officers or so. So uh, I think for a moment there, his, his last thought was, hey, I got to keep these guys completely away from them by creating that confrontation. He did that with his life. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller Mark Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You know what? There are those people who are still defending this, who are very quiet, folks who are making all of these excuses for what took place. Uh, one of those folks is, uh, guess what? Y'all are Franklin Graham. Uh-huh. Yeah. So-called, you know, pastor, son of uh, Billy Graham. Well, check this out. He sent this tweet out a couple of hours ago which shows you how Franklin Graham doesn't really give a damn about uh, Christianity, doesn't give a damn about any of these things. All he cares about, all he cares about is Republican politics. So, y'all, <laughs> here's a tweet that, and I'm, I'm pulling it right now. This is what he tweeted out. Shame, shame on the 10 Republicans who joined with Speaker Pelosi and the House Democrats in impeaching President Trump yesterday. After all that he has done for our country, you will turn your back and betray him so quickly. What was done yesterday only further divides our nation. Franklin, see, one, I'm not going to call you reverend because, frankly, you embarrass those who are actually ministers. Just like you never saw me calling Donald Trump president. I have been telling y'all about these white evangelicals. I have been telling you about these white conservative evangelicals who don't care about the Bible, who don't care about morality, who don't care about character. Five people died as a result of this insurrection. Five. One of them, a Capitol Hill police officer. And in the eyes of Franklin Graham... How dare you? How dare you impeach Donald Trump for inciting an insurrection? But here's the thing that Franklin Graham also didn't admit to. Y'all do realize that this has been the most bipartisan impeachment in American history. In the three previous impeachments, you never had 10 members of the president's party agreeing to impeach the person in the Oval Office. But in this case, they did. And those 10 Republicans were very clear that Donald Trump was guilty of inciting an insurrection. But Donald Trump's base are these white conservative evangelicals. These are the people who are so-called pro-life. These are the people who claim to love Jesus, but they won't call out what actually happened. They won't call it what it is. They won't hold the person accountable who actually did it. I read for you the, the uh, statement released by the head of the ethics group for the Southern Baptist Convention. He was very clear. Dr. Moore was very clear about what took place. But Franklin Graham and those of his ilk 
they will do anything to protect Donald Trump, even if it meant people dying. Y'all need to understand that that's what we're dealing with in this country. Joining me right now, Reese Covert, Black Women Abuse, Erica Savage Wilson, host Savage Politics Podcast, Dr. Greg Carr, chair of the Department of Afro American Studies at Howard University. Uh, Greg, I have been warning folks consistently about white conservative evangelicals, the individuals who are about the slaveholder religion. Franklin Graham consistently questioned the faith of President Barack Obama, but he has consistently defended Donald Trump, even saying, oh, no, nah, don't, don't get focused about the affairs and all of those different things and cheating on his wife and sleeping with the porn stars. We really shouldn't focus on those things. All we've heard for the last 40 years from the moral majority, Jerry Falwell, from Pat Robertson, and all of these people, morality and character and all of these things matter. And here we are where a man stood on the mall and told these people to go down to the Capitol and that led to a riot, it led to them storming the U.S. Capitol, it led to his own vice president having to be whisked away to the basement, protecting his life, and Franklin Graham and those of his ilk still won't be critical of Donald Trump. They are showing us who they are, and they are who we always said they were. That's true, brother. In fact, uh, in the last week, we have seen, perhaps, finally, the breaking of this country. In order for something new to be born, something has to die. You know, when we were all young, I'm sure you remember this growing up in the South Rolling. We go to vacation Bible school. They had a song, Oh, How I Love Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, Because He First Loved Me. That's all Franklin mm -hmm. Graham's doing. Uh, this, is, this is transactional religion. He loves Jesus, as long as the Jesus he loves can be the one he made up to love him. Their Jesus mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. a bomb-dropping, Muslim-killing, bleached, blonde, white, blue-eyed, kill-everything mm -hmm. movie. And so mm -hmm. he is being true to his religion. And mm -hmm. the problem that Franklin Graham has now, having doubled down, it is the same problem that those hundreds of, uh, almost 200, that is, Republicans who did not vote for impeachment yesterday have. They can't let go of their Snow White tar baby now. You got to ride with this. <laughs> and because of what mm -hmm. your cousins and them did last Wednesday, there ain't no gray area. You got to pick a side. Mm -hmm. So good luck, Frank. Roll with it, baby. Did, did you say Snow White tar baby? Snow, Snow White tar baby. Let's just mix up the color. So, tar ain't got to be <laughs> like... <laughs> oh, okay, I, I just wanted to make sure I heard that right. I just wanted to make yes. sure I heard that right. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> the thing here, Erica, um, and, and why all of this is important, it is important for everyone paying attention because when I made the point you have to decide which side you're on. You, you literally have to decide. Are you on the decide, are you on the side of evil, meaning the people who stormed the Capitol? Or are you on the side of those who say, I don't care what the politics are. I don't care about the tax breaks. I don't care about the deregulation. I don't care about any of that. That simply is un-American. And those Republicans, the 192, who voted not to impeach him, we know exactly what side they're on. When Kevin McCarthy, okay, gives us this speech to affirm that Joe Biden won the election, but we can pull the video on November 5th when he was asserting on Fox News that Donald Trump absolutely won and the election was being stolen from him. In a little bit, I'm gonna play you this video The Daily Show put together, which is a fantastic video. And frankly, The, the Daily Show put a video better than what mainstream media put together, showing you all of the people who contributed to this insurrection. And there are only two sides. And if anybody is waffling, we know what side you're on. You are on the side of the insurrectionists. You are on the side of the people who committed a treasonous act. You're on the side of people 
who want to continue to assert that Trump won because you desire to invalidate black voters. Yeah. Erica? Oh, I thought you were going to play the video. Excuse me. But no, I'll play, I'll play a little bit. Go ahead. Okay, but I just want to invoke this passage of scripture, these two, Matthew 7, 22 through 23. Many say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who practice lawlessness, Franklin Graham and company. These, I'm glad you made the distinction of white evangelicals, evangelicals, because what we've been talking about on this program, for anybody that's been watching it for any amount of time, is that there is a Klansman that is leading um, a full regime, but also a cult of people that always have known and grew up knowing that Black people were never granted full citizenship. And so this is what we saw on January 6th played out on television across the globe, that there was the ultimate denial, yet again, um, of Black full citizenship. Um, when we look at, you know, these people who have continued to support Trump and the way that they've been treated in media, we're seeing now this chart turn go towards trying to understand these now people who are um, being uh, described as having been radicalized. And what I think about um, just a few short years ago is when President Obama was leading the country, that there was a demand that he say radical Islamic terrorists. And so now we have 192 Republicans that sit on the House side of Congress that will not admit to these radical white domestic terrorists that people and those of us that live in the DMV are bracing for yet another wave mm -hmm. of terror coming on one of the biggest days in the globe. That is the inauguration of the first black woman, a woman of South um, Asian descent, as Madam Vice President. But just like what happened in Georgia on a uh, couple Tuesdays ago, it seems like it was years ago, that that was invalidated the day after, we still have invalidations that are yet happening. And so um, I would say that, you know, as we talk about Franklin Grahams and all of these other individuals that stood on uh, faith for people to understand what they had faith in. They lay at the altar of Donald John Trump and company. They don't have, they don't worship in spirit and truth as for those people who have a level of faith. Their worship has always been at the, um, the altar of white supremacy, power, and money. Full stop. All right, folks, back to that my unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support Roller March Unfiltered. Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller March Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Okay. Me now is Malcolm Nance, terrorism expert and author of the book The Plot to, to Betray America, how the team Trump embraced our enemies compromise our security and how we can fix it. This is critical. That the title of that book is critically important. Uh, Malcolm, go ahead and pull the book right. back up, please. Uh, it's critically important. The plot to betray America, how team Trump embraced our enemies, compromised our security and how we can fix it. Let's deal with the first part. 
how Team Trump mm -hmm. embraced our enemies. The Republican Party and Donald Trump full throttle and base embraced white supremacists, embraced these militias. They catered to them. They supported them. They sat there and allowed them to flourish. Uh, when you see all these photos of these various people, when you look at these groups, Charlie Kirk uh, has taken down this particular uh, video, excuse me, this tweet, uh, where he talked about how Turning Point USA uh, funded 80 buses bringing people uh, to the U.S. Capitol. But also, I'm going to play again for our folks. And Malcolm, you may not have seen this. I'm going to play it again. This is what I said on February 21st. 2016 on ABC this week. Listen, but listen to the Republican at the end. They invited evil in and now evil is taking over. OK, 2009, the night of Obama's inauguration, we will stop him at every turn. They love the Tea Party anger. They took advantage of it in 10 and 12 and 14. They always said we can control it. We can harness it. Now, all of a sudden, Trump is taking advantage of it. He led the whole birth of deal. The Republican establishment at some point has to say, you know what? We played with fire and now it's about to consume us. They have to accept well, the some blame. Well, the never played with fire. Sarah jumped in and said, the Republicans have it, never played with fire. Never played with fire. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, they're playing with napalm now. And, in fact, one of their followers was kind enough to bring napalm with him uh, to the Capitol. You know, Roland, as, as unfortunate a title as my last book is, you really don't want to know what my next book is called. Because I started writing it four months ago. And it was, the subtitle was, The Fanatics, Terrorists, militias and deranged ideology of the coming Trump insurgency. I have to change it now. The insurgency is here. It has moved away from being a, uh, you know, what we saw was a gathering storm. And Donald Trump pushed these people first into insurrection and sedition, because we, we hear all the seditious talk from his supporters. It was it was considered the rhetoric of Trump, the flower of the way that he speaks, to talk in, in terms of putting the government out and only Donald Trump is representative of the government. So as you said in, in my current title book, The How They Betrayed, you know, Embraced America's Enemies, well, <clears throat> you are finding out now firsthand that white supremacy is the dominant, uh, the dominant motivator for Donald Trump supporters. You know, there's there's no greater uh, white privilege than being able to go into the nation's capital, trash it, beat uh, policemen to death, uh, actually smear feces on the wall, steal loot and pillage, and then get escorted out politely with no one being arrested. So uh, that's that's where we are. But now we are entering a new phase of confrontation in American history, a very old foe. And what it is now building up into an Iraq like insurgency. And many of these people are going to embrace real terrorism. And they think that they're all bit players in a new version of, you know, of, of that that insurgent insurgent group, the Wolverines. Uh, you know, in the in the the American occupation fantasy, where all liberals are commies. This is the thing that people need to understand: when the president of the United States takes the oath of office, when members of Congress take the oath of office, this is what they have to repeat: "I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of president of the United States, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend." the Constitution of the United States, and it's that last part, from all enemies, foreign or <clears throat> domestic. That was put there because we've always had domestic terrorists, people who are white in America who've wanted to overthrow governments. You know, it's very true. Uh, we've always had domestic uh, enemies in this country, and it came to a fruition in 1860. But what we're seeing is really, if you were to categorize it, this would be 1862.0 or 1.75.
We never dealt with the demons of the Civil War. In fact, uh, the reconciliation afterwards was rather, was rather good. The Reconstruction really benefited them. And what we have is people who are more than willing to bring not just the Confederate flag into the U.S. Capitol. I just want to point something out to you. Next time you watch video of that rally, there are 10 to 1 Trump flag versus American flags. Right. And that... Well, that, that, well that at means, one point, they took the American flag down and raised the Trump and flag. And raised the Trump flag. That's correct. Uh, so you're looking at the, the core of their ideology. This is the most rabid cult of personality in American history. And I, I, I'd say that unreservedly because the Civil War, they at least tried to use a constitutional basis for their rebellion. And people actually split along the ideological lines of, you know, states' rights. States' rights to keep black people as property and make them free money. So now what you have is a completely different animal. You have people that are willing to destroy the United States government, uh, kidnap, capture, and kill its elected representatives to call for the death of the, of the uh, number two person in the executive branch to attempt to eliminate the entire uh, representative branch of government, including their allies, uh, because had that happened, had Mike Pence been injured or incapacitated or taken out of communication, Nancy Pelosi, who is third in line, been injured, incapacitated, or taken out of communication. The Senate, uh, Chuck Grassley, right, Senator Pro Tem, uh, the number four person in that line. Donald Trump, that very afternoon, would have been able to act as a monarch because there would be no people within the line of succession uh, that were not incapacitated at that time. I wonder how whether any of this actually crossed the minds of the protesters. And I'm going to give you a little psychology of a mob. Uh, a mob is not a human entity when they're set loose, right? What you have is you have minds uh, that are almost bestial, almost visceral. Uh, I've been in a mob in India, and I've been in a mob in Iraq with people who really wanted to kill me. Uh, but people will, will lose all of their morals, their value. When they got to that building, the thought of destroying the Congress in order to save Donald Trump, which was synonymous with save America, they had no problem with that. And right now, based on the communications I'm monitoring, they are regrouping. There's not a joke about them wanting to start on the 17th and start attacking things. They feel now that they've been made incommunicado with parlor being taken down and uh, you know other things like that. And they're seeking vengeance now on the very fact that Donald Trump, their tribal leader, is not able to just act as a dictator. And the problem is they're going to run into the full force of America at that point. They already hate it that they're being called terrorists and put on no-fly list at the airport. That's their level of inconvenience right now. Malcolm, the Congressman Jim Clyburn gave an interview to Joe Madison last week on Sirius X, <clears throat> where he seriously implied that this was an inside <laughs> job. It looks like we lost Malcolm's video. Let me know when it's back. And he, that, that was an inside job. That right. they found his private office. They passed his, they passed his um, public office, but found his private office. Yesterday right. on 60 Minutes, Speaker Nancy Pelosi was on, and she talked to uh, Leslie Stahl about how her staffers hid under a conference table and barricaded the doors and recorded the audio of these people banging on the door. They were trying to get in. I had Congresswoman Maxine Walls on this show last week, and she said had she not left the Capitol early, she said there is no doubt in her mind that if they had come across her or some other Democrats, they would have tried to kill them. Your thoughts yeah. on this notion of an inside job? We now know that Capitol, the Capitol Police are investigating 12 officers that said two have been uh, put on suspension, one has been arrested. Your thoughts on this, 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 this notion of an inside job here? You know, about a week ago, or just the day after, I had uh, some issues with that until I came across intelligence that, yes, there was actually some inside work on the Capitol, and here's why. Uh, not just with the sympathies of Capitol Hill police. There are some boogaloo elements 
who uh, liken themselves to, uh, you know, this uh, a military special operations organization. Some of them are military special operations that on the 5th of January went into the Capitol and the House office buildings and did reconnaissance of Nancy Pelosi's office. And, and we know one other, Adam Schiff. Uh, today, they came out, and, you know, some of these people came out and said, oh, that was just a joke. We're not really organized people. These people are militia men. And they were in the House and the Capitol on the 5th. Uh, two of their followers are well-known right-wing journalists. I have no doubt at this point that they did know where they were going and that they went in there to uh, facilitate all of the Proud Boys and Boogaloo Boys that were at that thing. Let me tell you, that rally was stock full of every Proud Boy and Boogaloo Boy you could see. All these guys who came with their body armor and their helmet and back. Everyone that we saw at Charlottesville was there. Every right-wing personality that was there, all the Twitter and Internet influencers who were Proud Boys and Boogaloo Boys and, oh, my God, the Oath Keeper, Three Percenters, all were there in battle gear. Look at the videos. They're almost two to one in some instances. They came to fight and go to war. They knew they couldn't bring long rifles, but they understood they had people power and their mass would knock down the defenses, along with the sympathizers who were clearly in Capitol Hill police in some instances. Uh, a lot of officers, I noticed towards the end, uh, when they, uh, they had penetrated the building, were stepping aside as if they had received radio communications to let them come in. Uh, I've been in that building. I've never seen anyone open the door right. and step off to the side. Black officers, Hispanic officers. <laughs> Nobody. No one communicated to them not to do anything. No Someone one did. There's just no way. But but uh, I, we're gonna find this out. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. Um, folks, um, there were a number of speeches that uh, took place on the floor. In fact, let's do this here. Let's play the speech by Congressman Jim Clyburn, what he had to say today on the House floor regarding impeaching Donald Trump. Today, we must do our constitutional duty once again. While the president failed in his attempt to upend our democracy last Wednesday's events, make clear that if we do not hold him accountable, and remove him from power, a future attempt could very well be successful. The survival of our democracy depends on defeated candidates accepting their defeats, as has been the case in every president's election since 1864. Our January 6th joint session is a vital part of the transfer of power, not the contest for power. Vice President Gore understood this, accepting and certifying the 2000 election result in which he was defeated. Vice President Biden understood this, accepted and certifying this president's victory in the 2016 election. This president's refusal to participate 
in the peaceful transfer of power and his role in the exciting of the last week's violence pose an existential threat to our constitutional democracy. This threat must be extinguished immediately. This president must be impeached and convicted, and he must be prevented from ever attempting to seize power again. With that, I'll yield back. Chairman, you Congressman Cedric Richmond of New Orleans, who will be leaving the House to go work for the White House under Joe Biden, uh, made it perfectly clear that this is why he was impeached the first time. When Republicans said, no, 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 nothing bad is going to happen. He's going to learn his lesson. He didn't. I rise today in my last floor speech in this body to do what I was sworn to do on the first day, to protect and defend the Constitution. President Trump put the domestic terrorists on notice by saying, stand back and stand by. He then summoned them to D.C., directed them to march on the Capitol, and then he sat back and watched the insurrection. Some of my colleagues, some of which may well be co-conspirators, in their latest attempt to placate and please this unfit president, suggest that we shouldn't punish Trump for his actions in order to unify the country. That is the climax of foolishness. Let me suggest to them, stand up, man up, woman up, and defend this Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic, including Donald J. Trump. In the first impeachment, Republicans said we didn't need to impeach him because he learned his lesson, so no need to remove him. Well, we said if we didn't remove him, he would do it again. The gentleman's time has expired. Simply put, we told you so. The gentleman's time has expired. Richmond out. Simply put, we told you so, Robert. You're absolutely correct. And let's just think about it this way. If Vladimir Putin did identify Donald Trump uh, four to five years ago or six years ago and decide to uh, help him run for office, his, his investment paid off three to one because they have exposed every weakness in the American political system. They've exposed uh, our weakness to demagoguery, our weakness to fake news, our, our, our weakness when it comes to checks and balances in the United States system, understanding how weak and impotent the Congress of the United States is uh, to regulate the, uh, the president. The Congress is ceded over its power of the purse strings in many ways to the presidency. It's ceded over its national security uh, power to make and declare war to the uh, to the executive branch. So in many ways, what we are seeing, what we've seen from the on the international stage, is the diminution of the Ameri of the uh, American influence overseas. And it's very, in many ways, it's looking as if this century is going to be a Chinese century, not an American century, because there's no way for our allies to believe that America has a political system that will be stable. There's no way for the economic markets to believe that the dollar will be able to sustain a Don Jr. run in 2024, or 2028, or 22, or a Ivanka presidency in the 2040s. Uh, if you're our ally, uh, if you're our ally in the international markets, how would you believe that America would have the power to stand up to that? And frankly, we are at a place now where we may be getting close to a convention of the states because we have to be able to reform our constitution, amend it, to put guard well rails in place to prevent the next Donald Trump from happening because around every corner there will be a Donald Trump generation rising up, and that is what America will be facing over the next half century. So, Donald, if this is what uh, Vladimir Putin paid for, he got his money back, you know, three to one. He might as well go play the, uh, the Mega Millions or the Powerball, because it worked out great for him. All right, folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially at Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roland Martin Unfiltered? 
be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roland Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Joining us right now is former Capitol Hill police officer, uh, Theodis Butch Jones. Uh, Butch, how long did you serve on the force? I for uh, 37 years. 37 years. When you look at this map, go right back to it, folks. When you see this map uh, that I'm showing right now and you see how deep these folks were able to get into the Capitol, that has to be shocking uh, to someone who knows full well uh, you guys clamp down on anybody and everybody once they hit those grounds if anything crazy goes on. Yes, sir. I, I think that was uh, too close. No outer perimeter, no inner perimeter. Um, in the history of Capitol Police, no one have ever crossed the line at all. So it was appalling to see how easy it was for them to come on the hill. Uh, we saw the video where they were literally just tossing aside barricades, overrunning these police officers. Uh, some police officers were seen on video waving folks in. Uh, that had to also be shocking. Uh, and, and we're hearing, look, I, we've talked to some members who are saying, look, I don't know if I can even trust uh, the Capitol Hill police force because there are some renegade cops on this force who were in support of what these folks did. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. But it's not just the police officers. And I hope they don't use the police officers for um, uh, when it's more than a police officer. They can't use the policemen for a scapegoat, and that's what they're doing. This was above their pay raise. These decisions was above their pay, road, pay raise. And I think members of Congress has a, a, and the Senate, somebody had to give um, the authority not to bring people in to help. And that's above the pay raise of Capitol Police, the Sergeant uh, Arms, the Chief of Police. This is higher than what we're looking at. Uh, the former police chief son who has resigned, uh, he said that it, he laid fault at the Sergeant at Arms. Uh, where they did not want uh, the same presence of uh, National Guardsmen on the steps of the U.S. Capitol that we saw when they hit the Black Lives Matter protesters. That's the one thing that actually that, that, that has happened. Uh, also, uh, the, the uh, Nancy Pelosi demanded and got the resignation of the House Sergeant at Arms. Uh, the Senate Sergeant at Arms has also resigned at uh, re uh, resigned as well. We also know from Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, he got phone calls from inside the Capitol from Speaker Nancy. Pelosi from Maryland Congressman Steny Hoyer, the majority leader, saying send in National Guard. He says 90 minutes before he could get somebody at the Pentagon to answer. Part of the thing people are saying is that Donald Trump, the people who he put in place, they did not want to lift a finger to help because, frankly, they were enjoying seeing what happened. And the Washington Post is reporting that Trump, there were people, Republicans, Kellyanne Con Conway, uh, Kevin McCarthy and others who were trying to reach Trump saying you've got to send help, he was preoccupied watching television. Again, again, this is above somebody's pay, pay scale. Um, there is no check and balance on Capitol Hill. Congress have no check and balance. Who check out Congress? Uh, they police themselves. The uh, sergeant of arms, are, um, they work, with, work for Congress. So if they say no, who are they going to go to? There is no check and balance. And they're going to make the little guys the guinea pig. But I guarantee you, as easy as it was, the, the only office was destroyed was the Democrats. They didn't, they didn't mess up any of the statues in Statue Hall. You know, it's, it's like somebody said, you can do this, but don't do this. It was too easy. And for them not to have reinforcement, for them not to have Metropolitan or the United States Park Police helping them, something was wrong with that picture. 
Uh, when you speak of that, uh, even some Republicans have been critical of Congresswoman Lauren uh, Boebert of uh, Colorado because they blasted her on a call yesterday uh, saying, what the hell were you doing tweeting the positioning of Nancy Pelosi when we were under attack? Uh, and she says, oh, she didn't mean any harm. They said she was literally saying where Nancy Pelosi was in the Capitol. That's correct. And, and Mr. Martin, here's the thing. Um, somebody knows something. You know, it, there's no way that you don't, you, in a situation like that, you got reinforcement. They treated um, last week like it was a regular work day. No, and you know, 2,200 officers was not on work. So something is wrong when management um, leave their officers out to dry. And the only reason they speak in the way they're speaking right now is, is because members got scared. Members were scared for their life. So, yes, they want something done. Um, BuzzFeed had an article uh, where a couple of black officers on the force talked about being called the N-word, talked about uh, what they saw took place, and they were shocked and stunned as well. Uh, and they said, look, I mean, you had white supremacists who were part of this uh, uh, attempted coup d'etat. Uh, this, is, this is not the first word. This is not the first time black officers on Capitol Hill have been mistreated or been called by the N-word. When I started on the police department, the N-word was usually being used by calling you boy. Meant the same thing, but still, um, racism and discrimination is well known on Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill has been known um, for years to be the last plantation, the good old boy system. So when you have that, unless they have a check and balance, this has been going on for years, and this was not planned for a couple of weeks. This has been in the plan for a while for it to go as smooth as it went. Uh, to your point, this is a video I'm playing right now uh, that was in that BuzzFeed article showing as the, them coming uh, into uh, the U.S. Capitol. That is Eugene Goodman right there, uh, the officer. We discussed him the other day, uh, and as they were approaching, he knew it was just him, and he was the last line of defense. We, we showed it yesterday how he picked the stick up. When he comes up these steps, he's going to look. He's calling for his support. He's going to look to his left because that's where the that was, that was the entry to the U.S. Senate floor. Uh, and we should, we had a shortened version yesterday. This is a, this is the longer video. When he gets when he gets to the top of the steps, he's going to look over his shoulder. If he did not lead them away right here, uh, he looked down the hallway. If he, didn't, he did not lead them away, they were literally within seconds of being able to attack members of the United States Senate. Uh, we had Congresswoman Maxine Waters on the show. She said, point blank, that if she had not left the Capitol early, there is no doubt she would have been targeted and potentially killed by these protesters. Again, I am not surprised. You know, and it's sadly to say the police officers have always been there for Congress. The sad part is Congress have not been there for the police officers. 9-11, they were there. Um, doing the anthrax, they were there. When they had demonstrations, they were there. Um, when they was at the ba baseball field and the police officers, two black police officers saved the congressman, they were so grateful, but they left them naked last Wednesday when they had this demonstration. Somebody knew what was going on. Uh, this is a quote from that BuzzFeed article from one of these black police officers. That was a heavily trained group of militia terrorists that attacked us. They had radios. We found them. They had two-way communicators and earpieces. They had bear spray. They had flashbangs. They were prepared. They, they strategically put two IEDs, pipe bombs, in two different locations. These guys were military trained. A lot of them were former military, the officer said. They even said, the officers even described coming face to face with police officers from across the country in the mob. He said some of them flashed their badges, telling him to let them through and trying to explain that this was all part of a movement that was supposed to help. Quote, you have the nerve to be holding a Blue Lives Matter flag and you are out there fucking us up. One guy pulled out his badge and said, we're doing this for you. Another guy had his badge, so I was like, well, you got to be kidding. You know, Mr. Martin, I'm surprised that people are surprised. This has been going on for years, and for um, all of a sudden, people are surprised. You know, if that had been Black Lives Matter, 
Louis Farrakhan, they wouldn't even got to the steps. They wouldn't have got past 4th Street in Southwest on the Southwest going to the Capitol. Because this was a white organization demonstration, they did not prepare like they would if it was a black organization. And yes, I think it was still too easy. Well, you're absolutely right. I can tell you when Jamal Bryant, Jeff Johnson, and I, when we brought 200 brothers to Capitol Hill uh, to stand up for Loretta Lynch, trust me, and we were met at the top of the steps by Congresswoman Joyce Beatty and Congressman uh, 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 Andre Carson, it was a hell of a whole lot of Capitol Hill cops who came out of nowhere for 200 black men who were there, very peaceful, uh, just to speak up for Loretta Lynch. You know, just before I forget, I want to say, I take my hat off to the mayor of D.C. Can you imagine if she did not tell Black Lives stay at home, there would have been a blood bath out there. A lot of people could have got hurt if the mayor of the District of Columbia did not tell Black Lives Matter to stay at home. And I remember when Farrakhan came up to the hill with four gentlemen, just four. They held the whole department over until he left the hill. Even they had a uh, SWAT team in the garage. And it was an insult to every black officer because Farrakhan wasn't like that. <laughs> All of that for Farrakhan and four guys with him. I I'm telling you, they held the whole department, the House side, the Senate side, the Capitol side, the PD and SWAT. They held them for oh, at least two hours over until he left the building. Wow. What do you think should happen next? Uh, well, you know, the president said um, that the people that was involved, they should be treated the same way he thought people should be treated if they take down the statues, that they should get 10 years. I think they should get some serious time. I think they should look at Congress and it should be an investigation, a, a off the hill investigation, not members of Congress, but people outside a commission to find out what went wrong because our democracy was challenged on last Wednesday. The orders Butch Jones spent nearly 40 years as a Capitol Hill police officer. Sir, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much for your insight. Thank you for having me. All right, folks, back to our my unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin unfiltered to support it, please do because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to rolandmartinunfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to rolandmartinunfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. rolandmartinunfiltered.com. Support Roland Martin Unfiltered. Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roland Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. The National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, they are calling for a full-scale review of security protocols at the U.S. Capitol. Noble is questioning how the Capitol Police could have been so ill-prepared for Wednesday's insurrection. Joining us now is Linda Williams. She is the president of the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives. Uh, glad to have you back on the show, um, President uh, Williams. When you witnessed what took place on Wednesday, surely uh, the law enforcement side of you had to be yelling at the TV going, what the hell are y'all doing and where are the reinforcements? Thank you, first of all, Roland, for having me. Good to see you again. It was an atrocity. The U.S. Capitol and, and all the law enforcement element in Washington, D.C., they are well-versed on security protocol and on all the resources that are needed to implement a safe environment. 
there was a lack or discredit of intelligence that was not even recognized or that they decided not to act upon. Because this is a wealth or machine. The United States Capitol is a, a, is a people's place, so they're used to these mass uh, collection of people. So it's, it was a travesty in so many levels. And even as we're trying to go back and look at it again, there will be a time to assess the blame. But now we need to look at it from a different lens of where did we come short and what was the assessment to, to not prepare accordingly. What about, uh, I, I was, uh, I read earlier, I read a comment from Congressman Jim Clyburn uh, who said that his hidden office was discovered. They didn't touch the office with his name on it. He applied, it's an inside job. You know, that has to be, that, that, that has to be extremely scary to think that the people who are supposed to be protecting House uh, members of Congress could very well have been aiding or abetting those who stormed the Capitol. And that's why it has to be a thorough after action report. Just like how we saw that some of those officers uh, were, were pacifying or placating those, those, that, the, that mob. Uh, as federal employees, we are apolitical. And there is a standard and a professional uh, aptitude that one takes. And so again, a thorough after after report, it was a travesty on so many levels that they need to go back and look at it. Uh, step by step, because it's not a lack of preparation that they didn't know how to do it, didn't know what to do. We know every four years there's an inauguration, and it's a well-oiled machine with law enforcement from all over the nation to converge in for a safe environment. So again, we have to go back right now, not to, to assess blame, but again, go back and walk backwards to see where, where that lapse in, in, in decision-making decision -making was made. Um, the, um, I, I'm, uh, hearing, uh, first of all, uh, the interim police chief is y Yogananda, uh, Pittman. She was a deputy to Stephen son. She is now, uh, the acting chief of Capitol police, a sister, uh, now. And, um, the, the thing here, uh, how do you lead, uh, an investigation of this type? Some people are saying put Capitol police under secret service. Um, and so how does one go about even some people saying, you know, you got to purge the ranks of people uh, who were aiding and abetting these folks. How do you even do that? It starts with a collaborative effort, not only from the investigative arm of the Capitol Police, but external uh, uh, investigators to come in to make it unbiased. And so it has to start from day one of what that planning how they start planning and who made the ultimate decisions of not to execute, you know, the elements and the resources need to control such. So it goes way back. They are very well tuned. Uh, and, and they have done this over and over without this occurring. So again, the decision makers, who did that and for what reason? And that's where we need to start because this is nothing new. It happens all the time. Now with the intel or whether they were biased in doing that and not to give the same um, protection and, and put the resources for a crowd of that nature versus what they did to Black Lives Matter is what we need to look at. Uh, we talked to Congresswoman um, Maxine Waters, and she had a meeting with the chief, the former chief now. We assure her everything is going to be fine. But what really bothers me is after, like in the midst of this coup d'etat, the Justice Department called and said, hey, we can send FBI agents. They go, nah, we're good. We got this under control. What? I would think in that situation, you say all hands on deck, send me everybody you got. Well, rolling it, 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 you know, it, the proof is in the pudding. The images bear themselves out. We saw what happened. We saw that that was a mob. They call it insurrection or coup. Domestic terrorists is what it is. And so, again, that they, they were asleep at, at the wheel that they decided, you know, because this has not been done at a Trump uh, rally before. That's not that's not de in depth uh, entail. You still have to prepare and be on the ready. You know, one thing in all of my training as a federal agent, you are trained for what you know. You might not get to execute those skill set every day, but this is something that wasn't 
out of the ordinary and, and a plan and a secure security plan was in place. There's a standing MOU throughout Washington, D.C., as we see all the time, and you know that even at the White House, Secret Service uh, guards the White House ground, park police handles the, the sidewalks, and Metropolitan handles the street. So it is a is ever uh, rotating um, jurisdictional support as 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 we we secure these these buildings in Washington D.C. So it wasn't that the security plan did not exist. The choice was made. Why didn't we execute it accordingly? Linda Williams, President Noble, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much for joining us. And thank you for having me. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller Mark Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. Um... Uh, the, the actions taken today, Monique, when, when, when we put them in historical context, the per I go back to the purpose of impeachment. This is the only recourse Congress has to truly hold a president accountable. Impeachment is supposed to be the ultimate thing. House impeaches, the Senate convicts or acquits. Republicans have basically said, you know what, do whatever. And when Trump said, I could stand on Fifth Avenue and kill somebody and my supporters would not leave me, everybody, all these media people, and Republicans, oh, he's just joking. He's just, no, he oh, wasn't. he's just, that's just a figure of speech. No, he was 100% correct, 100% correct, and Monique, they are proving that he was right. They are willing to let him do anything because they want to stay in power. This is about power and control. Absolutely. Power absolutely. corrupts. And, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And we are seeing what that looks like in real time and how that can threaten the very principles of our democracy. And we weren't uh, close to perfect in the execution of what a democracy should be in the first place. We have systems in place that I don't have to talk to your listeners about from the vestiges of slavery up till now that make this a very imperfect union. But we are seeing what the corruption and perversion looks like when you can buy your place into an office, when you can use blackmail in order to gain uh, support, when you can put the squeeze on pretty much anybody, elected officials, and when foreign influences are actually controlling foreign countries that are supposed to be mm -hmm. our adversaries are actually controlling the person who runs in the highest office of the land. And, and so the entire system 
and I mean rooted to tutor, it has to be shaken, turned upside down and shaken to see what's going to fall out. Because to, to Robert's point, you know, we don't just have these rogue uh, GOP members. They want to carry weapons in the Capitol now because they, they aren't a part of the same D.C. reg that they can't ca carry them. They are spreading uh, coronavirus. You know, the, the the assault on the Capitol turned into a super spreader event that is preying on the the infirm among them and those with pre-existing conditions. There are members of Congress right now that are a real threat to their own colleagues. So it's not just that the impeachment mm -hmm. has to have some teeth. All of it, removal has to... I mean, Al Franken got pushed out of office because of an allegation. And and we've got people now staying in office that are treasonous, that are supporting insurrection, that have no oath whatsoever except for to this president. So there's so much more that needs to be done uh, under this Biden-Harris administration in order to just reconstruct actually some pillars into the, the entire operation of gotcha. what it looks like to be a federal government. Hold All right, folks, back to our my unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. Um, folks, um, there were a number of speeches that uh, took place on the floor. In fact, let's do this here. Let's play the speech by Congressman Jim Clyburn, what he had to say today on the House floor regarding impeaching Donald Trump. Today, we must do our constitutional duty once again. While the president failed in his attempt to upend our democracy last Wednesday's events, make clear that if we do not hold him accountable, and remove him from power, a future attempt could very well be successful. The survival of our democracy depends on defeated candidates accepting their defeats, as has been the case in every president's election since 1864. Our January 6th joint session is a vital part of the transfer of power, not the contest for power. Vice President Gore understood this, accepting and certifying the 2000 election result in which he was defeated. Vice President Biden understood this, accepting and certifying this president's victory in the 2016 election. This president's refusal to participate in the peaceful transfer of power and his role in the exciting of the last week's violence pose an existential threat to our constitutional democracy. This threat must be extinguished immediately. This president must be impeached and convicted, and he must be prevented from ever attempting to seize power again. With that, are you about? Chairman, you Congressman Cedric Richmond of New Orleans, who will be leaving the House to go work for the White House under Joe Biden, uh, made it perfectly clear that 
This is why he was impeached the first time. The Republicans said, no, 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 nothing bad is going to happen. He's going to learn his lesson. He didn't. I rise today in my last floor speech in this body to do what I was sworn to do on the first day, to protect and defend the Constitution. President Trump put the domestic terrorists on notice by saying, stand back and stand by. He then summoned them to D.C., directed them to march on the Capitol, and then he sat back and watched the insurrection. Some of my colleagues, some of which may well be co-conspirators, in their latest attempt to placate and please this unfit president, suggest that we shouldn't punish Trump for his actions in order to unify the country. That is the climax of foolishness. Let me suggest to them, stand up, man up, woman up, and defend this Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic, including Donald J. Trump. In the first impeachment, Republicans said we didn't need to impeach him because he learned his lesson, so no need to remove him. Well, we said if we didn't remove him, he would do it again. Gentlemen's time has expired. Simply put, we told you so. The gentleman's time has expired. Richmond out. Simply put, we told you so, Robert. You're absolutely correct. And let's just think about it this way. If Vladimir Putin did identify Donald Trump uh, four to five years ago or six years ago and decide to uh, help him run for office, his, his investment paid off three to one because they have exposed every weakness in the American political system. They've exposed uh, our weakness to demagoguery, our weakness to fake news, our, our, our weakness when it comes to checks and balances in the United States system, understanding how weak and impotent the Congress of the United States is uh, to regulate the, uh, the president. The Congress is ceded over its power of the purse strings in many ways to the presidency. It's ceded over its national security uh, power to make and declare war to the uh, to the executive branch. So in many ways, what we are seeing, what we've seen from the on the international stage, is the diminution of the Amer of the uh, American influence overseas. And it's very, in many ways, is looking as if this century is going to be a Chinese century, not an American century, because there's no way for our allies to believe that America has a political system that will be stable. There's no way for the economic markets to believe that the dollar will be able to sustain a Don Jr. run in 2024, or 2028, or 22, or a Ivanka presidency in the 2040s. Uh, if you're our ally, uh, if you're our ally in the international markets, how would you believe that America would have the power to stand up to that? And frankly, we are at a place now where we may be getting close to a convention of the states because we have to be able to reform our constitution, amend it, to put guard rails in place to prevent the next Donald Trump from happening because around every corner there will be a Donald Trump generation rising up, and that is what America will be facing over the next half century. So, Donald, if this is what uh, Vladimir Putin paid for, he got his money back, you know, three to one. He might as well go play the, uh, the Mega Millions or the Powerball, because it worked out great for him. All right, folks, back to that my unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.